We're, we're utterly unimportant. No, that's probably true. <laughs> we are utterly unimportant compared to this. There's a question over here. I'd like to ask Mr. Harris, can you talk about um, film as a mechanism to educate and, and unite people? Say it again? Film as a, as a means to educate and unite people. Is it? Are you saying it well, is? Well, in your opinion. Um, on those terms. Do you think, I mean, do, do you, I mean, do you actually think that people go to a movie and are influenced by it? the political opinion of the director, say Oliver Stone, who makes these political movies? Are you influenced by what he, his opinion is? I don't care what Oliver Stone, I don't care what opinion he's got. I mean, the reality is out there, not the depiction of somebody's mind. But in the sense of, let's say, a, a country that uh, the media is ran by the government, when a film comes in that might provide a different perspective, can't that help to educate and unite people? Say it again. I'm, in, I'm getting a little deaf. I'm okay. So would you just kind of speak up a little? Sure. Blind. In the sense of, let's say, um, the former Soviet Union, yeah. where it's a very controlled society in terms of the media. Yeah. In in the essence, in the sense where a film could come in and and potentially provide a different perspective, doesn't that offer an opportunity to unite and educate people? Can movies educate people? Is unite and educate. He what? said. He said unite and educate. Unite. Mm. That's what he said. I don't know. I mean, I have. I have very little regard for the motion picture business. I have very little regard for actors. I have very little regard for directors. I, I, you know, I think we're here one minute and gone the next. We're totally unimportant, and I hope to Christ I don't actually see a barrage of Hollywood stars standing up and making political speeches. I hope not. I hope in, we're, not going to be, we're not going to be thrusted into a, another generation of Jane Fonda's. I, 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 shut up. Let the politicians deal with it. But all of a sudden, there's a this great tendency for actors to sort of to I'm afraid actually believe them they're far more important than they are, and they go up and they start making they stand at political rallies mm -hmm. and they vote and they stand up and they sing and they donate money to electing a president of the United States and, and in England the same thing. I think we're silly even to listen to them. I don't mind going to the movies, that's bad enough, but apart from to listen on television, I, talking politics is even worse. <laughs> I, I, I think in the context of... of Sorry what, about that. Yeah, I, 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 I think in the context of what you're saying, I, I um, would like to disagree with Richard on, on, that, on one important point. I, I think that movies, television, entertainment generally, um, you know, do have a massive vicarious power which uh, is underestimated. And I think that Cumulatively, also, the, the culture of a certain movie-making country has a, a, a cumulative one, effect. Tell me, so, tell me one Let me finish, Richard. <laughs> tell me one movie that has actually made that kind of a difference. I think cumulatively name all movies name do. Name one. Oh, I've been influenced by movies. What? I, w I was hugely influenced by a film by Sajid Ray, uh, pa Panther Pachali. I was hugely influenced by the movies of Rossellini and by De Sica. I was hu hugely influenced by Bernardo Bertolucci's early work. I was hugely influenced by Goddard's movies. Well, wait a second, influenced in what way? I mean, well, in the sense politi that it changed the way I you thought. Did Bertolucci change your political point of view or something? He made me, he reminded me that but perhaps, I, he reminded me that perhaps I should have a look at the world from his perspective, and I think that's a valid... He well, he didn't make movies about the world perspective. He, he made I mean, movies you go, you're going to go and enjoy his picture. We could shoot, ask him in here and chat to us about this. But I mean, let's know. go and enjoy his film, let's go and enjoy his film. Well, but that's, and see the art. But that's my point, Richard. We're talking about... Movies, I'm sure you meant mm. in the political arena. What? A social social re arena as well. He's talking in about. In the political arena. And social. And social arena. Mm. Okay. I, the same thing. I mean, I, I think there are movies that are stupid and, 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 and uh, don't entertain. There are movies that are stupid and do entertain. There are movies that aren't so stupid and entertain and but you have look, huge I mean, power. Excuse, excuse me, just, second. Excuse mm. me. Look at our movie. Okay, you well, look at our movie. Well, that's insignificant. One of the reasons <laughs> that I like, one of the reasons... Our movie's I, insignificant. Let's <laughs> one of, shut up, I'm speaking. <laughs> we made the movie like this, don't you worry. see what our relationship is like? like this. We were like this the entire day. <laughs> our, look at our movie. You have Hollywood. Talk about Hollywood in terms of movies. Huh? We've had generations of gangster movies coming out of Hollywood that have been romanticized, and they have been uh, sympathetic to Ganlang. I mean, starting from James Cagney, to uh, Humphrey Bogart, from Humphrey Bogart, to Marlon Brando, from Marlon Brando, to Scorsese, from Scorsese, to De Niro, romanticizing villainy. And the reason I love this picture is, our picture, is because we don't. These are horrendous people. These are bad, evil people that have left 
legions of victims behind them. So you're saying that movies can influence? If you were to believe Hollywood's version of Gangland, we'd all be out with gangsters. We'd, all be, we'd be joining the Mafia now. We'd be getting guns and blowing up things and stealing money and doing that. Mm. They're weird. Come on. When you say you have a responsibility, you have a responsibility that they don't actually take. They are irresponsible. I should, most movie make irresponsible. But the audiences can be very responsible in their, their reaction well, to it. That's the idea. He says can it influence, and you're saying they can be responsible to an irresponsible picture? Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying that they influence if they're influenced. Mm. Then why do them? If they're, in, if they're going to influence people, right, as you seem to think they do, then we'd all be out wearing caps and having mafia cars and blowing up things and, and getting protection money here and stealing that. Well, you don't think that goes Everybody on? wanted to be Marlon Brando. Everybody wanted to be Jimmy Cagney, shooting people. And then there's sort of the great redeeming feature of Jimmy Cagney, but he got shot at the, at the footsteps of a, of a church. Oh, that's redemption. Get out of it. Pearl, did you want to be Bonnie and uh, Bonnie and Clyde? Well, just to change the subject. That's the one that the th thing about, have you seen our film? No, I haven't. Are you, oh, what are you talking about? Have you seen our, anybody seen our film? <laughs> I'd, let me Some interject and say that one of the screenings was unfortunately cancelled yesterday. Oh, I see, I see. But there's no redemption in our film. We're not glorifying um, um, gangland and villainy. We don't glorify it. These people are horrible people. My character is a horrible man. He's family owned. There's only one redeeming character in our picture. That was um, Joe. Only one redeeming person in the picture. I mean, that's the way you should deal with these things. But making gods out of John Gotti and people like that is ridiculous. And, a, and, a, and, a, and a, I'm sorry to say that if an American, if they were making a movie about, and about John Gotti tomorrow and you had um, De Niro play it, he would insist on some lovely scenes in which audience would, yeah, I want to be loved, I want to be understood. I insist you write a couple of scenes for me there when I'm sympathetic. Rubbish. <laughs> don't, what? What, what, don't know what Thank you. to say about that to you. Um, what, what was I going to say about what? Sorry. I had the impression that you wanted to... Uh... No, I was going to say that uh, Richard is obviously batting from the pri privilege of, 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 uh, of his um, uh, fantastic career and from the privilege of age. Um, <laughs> um, I'm sure there are a lot of actors who would be very reluctant to say that uh, essentially what you're suggesting, that, that actors like De Niro are concerned about their, their public image and, and, and in that sense ingratiate people through their performances. But, uh, you don't believe that's true? I'm not going to direct any of them. I've, I've, not, I've worked I've, with a lot I've, of them. I've, 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 always that I've directed... Uh, Have uh, you ever directed I've, those people? Not though? Robert De Niro, no. Not I know him, I know him, and I think he'd be horrified at your opinion, Richard. I well, think of course, he'd, of course, he'd be in denial. <laughs> <laughs> that's I psycho it. babble, I know, Richard. I've that, worked with him. I know, <laughs> I've been exposed to him. Well, he's not. What is interesting is that Richard's Somebody performance is, a, is an evil man. Nobody's all bad, they say. He she plays, no, she's Richard that plays bad. a very evil man. He does, and he does it very brilliantly because he's not at all an evil man. He's a really sweetheart. He's a terribly a charming word. chap. <laughs> he's trying to get me to shut up. <laughs> Pearl, step in. Just we did actually, it's worth saying that we did have some very, very powerful... Uh, arguments I'd say about the moral issues uh, because you, you you know when you're dealing with criminals and you're dealing with the impact of what criminals do the moral issues become actually central to the film and I'm actually trying to support Ricardo here by saying actually we as actors and directors do occasionally have a responsibility to our audience and that's in a sense supporting your idea that perhaps movies can have some form of albeit vicarious tiny influence you know that's all I'm really saying Richard anyway Bro. <laughs> Just to change.